Hello, hello. I wanted to record this little tutorial on how to draw splines with your mouse in editor using Unreal's scriptable tools interface. As you can see, I like to use these splines in a way that is inspired by Blender's grease pencil. So I was able to connect Houdini Engine to the tool to generate some geometry, and I will post a video breakdown on that, which you can watch if you're interested. But the spline tool could also just as easily be connected to Unreal's new PCG system or any other application of your choosing. The point of this video is just to quickly show you how I even draw the spline so that they can either stick to static meshes or are aligned to the screen plane as you see here. Okay, first things first, we're going to go into our plugins and make sure we actually have the scriptable tools framework and editor mode. So you're going to want both of these to be enabled if this is your first time using the interface. Okay, so we can go ahead and create a new blueprint from class, and it should be the editor scriptable click drag tool. So once we create that, we can just give it a name. And then we can go over to our class defaults and give our tool a name. This is going to be how we actually identify our tool when we see it in the scriptable tools window. And then totally optional, but the tooltip will show up when you hover over the tool and can just be some quick instructions for your user on how to use it. So we can now check if our tool shows up by going to the scriptable tools window. And as you can see, it's right there under custom tools. Um, and when we click on that button and enable the tool, nothing happens, which is expected because we haven't added anything yet. So let's do that. So we'll begin by laying down an on drag begin event, which will be triggered the moment we click on our tool and begin dragging in the viewport. Um, so holding down the mouse button in editor. Um, and then we'll also get an on drag update position, which will be called multiple times during the duration of that drag, almost like a tick. And so the moment we start dragging, we want to spawn the spline. Um, but as you can see, we can't actually put a spline actor into this class here. We're going to have to actually make one ourselves. So we'll go ahead and create another new blueprint from class and just have it inherit from the general actor. And we'll call it BP Spline. And this is really simple. All we have to do is add a spline component to this blueprint and nothing else. So let's go ahead and compile and save this. And then when we return to our tool blueprint, when you go back to that class and look up spline, the BP spline we just created will show up and we can put it in there. Ah, for whatever reason, it's still not compiling, which seems like some weird bug. And I found that I could fix this just by splitting that spawn transform into struct pins. And for whatever weird reason, this works. So if you run into that issue yourself, you can just do that. Um, and then we'll go ahead and promote the return value to a variable called spline because we'll be using this later. And as an extra precaution, we're going to want to clear all spline points um, before using it, um, even though there shouldn't be any points. Um, this just makes sure I cover all my bases here. When we click on our tool multiple times, you can see all these splines get generated in the outliner. And so now we're going to want to split this new position into a struct pin and then also that new position world ray again into a struct pin. And we'll see that that gives us a start position and a direction for this ray that we're shooting into the scene whenever we click using this tool, which is really neat. So we're going to go ahead and use a line trace by channel with the origin being our start position and our end being the direction multiplied by some big number, um, which is kind of arbitrary. And yeah, I just went with 5,000. And now we're going to choose a draw debug type out of one of these options. I like for one frame. Um, and then also really important to trace complex here. 
And so, yeah, let's go ahead and see if this works and compile. And yeah, as you can see, uh, everywhere that we're hitting an object and it's resulting in a collision, we see this red dot, which means that a collision is happening and that we're going to actually be able to read the point in space where this collision is happening and put our spline there, which is really nifty. So now we're going to go ahead and split this out hit into a struct pin and there's a ton of outputs but don't be overwhelmed. We're just going to go ahead and take this out hit hit actor and check its class. The way I want this tool to work is I only want a spline to be drawn when we're hitting a static mesh. You could forego this boolean check completely or have some other condition. It's completely up to you but I'm going to make this the branching condition for whether a point is drawn or not. Um, so we're going to go ahead and branch and get that output into the condition. And then we're going to grab our spline. And Sorry, jumped around a bit, but essentially we just need to drag the spline into the add spline point target. And then we'll take our out hit location and put that into our position to determine where that point goes in space. And let's try this out. So yeah, as you can see, we're now drawing splines on these objects, uh, on these static meshes. But there is a problem and that's that the spacing of these points is inconsistent um, and depends on the speed of our mouse. So to fix that, we need some sort of condition to figure out um, how many points we have per length um, traversed. Um, and so I'm going to add another branch condition. And we're going to go ahead and promote the out hit location to a variable called previous locations. So this location will be um, initialized to 0, 0, 0, and then it'll only be set the next time an actual point is added to our spline, um, which is really uh, important to understand. So we're going to then want to compare our current hit location to this previous um, location. Uh, it should be labeled previous spline location, not previous hit location. That's my mistake. But then we're going to use the distance um, node to figure out the distance between those two points and compare that to a threshold of our choosing. So here I want to see if it's greater than or equal to some number. That I'll probably end up adjusting, as you can too, to figure out um, like how far I want to traverse before I add this next point and then update this previous location and then it um, you know, the loop will continue. Uh, and I apologize if the way I'm presenting this information is confusing, but hopefully it'll make sense to you as you go ahead and implement it yourself. So yeah, here I'm just like cleaning up and fixing these remaining compiler errors by making sure everything's plugged into the right place. And then we can go ahead and see if this works. So yeah, when we compile it and draw our splines, as you can see, evenly spaced points, um, really smooth lines on all sorts of surfaces, um, regardless of the speed that I'm drawing at, which is exactly what we want. So now that this is working, let's go ahead and move on to our um, screen plane aligned spot spline tool so that when we click on an object and start drawing, uh, the spline will then orient itself in the direction that we're facing or that our camera is facing. So going through the steps again and inheriting from editor scriptable click drag tool, we then name it and add the tool name. Um, and a tooltip if you want to. I think I skip it here, but <laughs> that's totally up to you. And then let's get an event on drag begin. And this time we're going to go ahead and split the struct pin here to start our ray tracing. So it's the same um, procedure we did with the lines on surfaces, but we're doing it the moment we click um, on any object in the editor. Um, and this is because we want to detect if we're even hitting an object in the first place, so then lock in the camera um, orientation that will then 
um, informed the spline orientation. So hopefully you can follow me here. Um, but yes, just multiplying the direction by a large number, having our start be our ray origin. And then I'm going to split this out hit into struct pins and then get that return value. And I'm only going to branch if it's positive, because if it's positive, it means we actually hit something. And then now we're also going to use a get actor from class node to get the cine camera actor in our scene. Um, and so we can compile and now you're probably like, well, there isn't a camera actor in our scene, so this isn't going to work, obviously. So let's go ahead and drag one in from our um, place actor panel, and I'm just going to position it um, so that it kind of matches like how I'm looking at the scene from the editor itself. Um, there probably is a better way to do this than using a camera, but I'm actually really new to Unreal, and this just seemed like the most obvious um, solution um, in a pinch. So if you have any better ideas, let me know. But once we have that in our scene, then it'll, you know, be called in this blueprint when we use that get actor from class node. So then we're going to go ahead and get the transform of this camera. And using that transform information, we're going to spawn a static mesh. So hopefully you can follow here. I'm going to go ahead and take the rotation of the camera and feed it into the rotation of the static mesh. And then I'm going to set the position based on the hit position from the line trace by channel. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and set the static mesh to a cube. Um, which is going to act as like our temporary screen plan. And then I'm also going to scale that cube up in the um, in two of these axes. And then, yeah, once we actually set the mesh to the cube, we can then go ahead and compile and test this out. So first of all, make sure you're looking through the camera while you test this out. But yeah, everywhere that we click, we get a cube that generates at that position, but then it's aligned to our camera's orientation. So this is a really hacky method, but I like it because it lets me actually visualize where these splines are going to be placed. There are probably other ways to constrain these splines rather than literally generating a mesh. Um, but I don't know, this was the most obvious way for me. So let's go ahead and promote this static mesh actor to a variable. Um, we can call it like screen plane so that we have this reference handy. And then let's also adjust the x value to something smaller, like 0 0.01 or even 0 0.001 if you want, just so it's um, paper, paper thin when we draw the spline. And then now we can actually spawn our spline. Um, so now this part should be familiar. We'll spawn it and then um, clear its points. Uh, well, first save it to a spline variable and then clear its points. And yeah, we we'll probably have to split that struct pin again for whatever silly reason. But yay, no compiler errors. So now we just kind of, again, recreate some of these steps um, from the last tool where we do another uh, line trace by channel and um, then put our right origin and our direction in as inputs or scaled direction, that is. Um, And oh yeah, trace complex and all that, split the struct pin. Now we'll go ahead and grab our hit actor and this time we're gonna check if we're hitting the screen plane instead of checking whether it's just a static mesh. And this is to ensure that our spline is then constrained to the orientation of the like actual screen plane. Um, and then we'll go ahead and create the second branching condition. This is again familiar where we're setting our previous location.
and then doing the distance calculation. And making sure that's greater than um, some value of our choosing. And that will be our second branching condition. And yeah, now we can go ahead and get our spline and add the spline point. And now when we try this out, we see that we are indeed drawing splines that align with these planes that are then oriented the way we want the splines to be oriented to, which is great. But obviously we don't want these planes to persist in our screen. So when we destroy the actor, uh, school, uh, excuse me, tool shut down. Um, we then don't have any traces of this geometry generation <laughs> that we're doing. Um, which I guess feels a little silly, but again, it works. So um, I'm curious like what other approaches there may be to it, but um, the visual is also pretty cool and handy. Um, especially if there are things you want to debug or features you want to add uh, on top of this. Um, it is really nice to see everything as it happens. But of course, um, when this tool is actually in action, the plane can obscure stuff in your scene. So you can also just turn off the visibility like so. And there we have it. Splines that are aligned to the screen plane. So this could be cool for drawing flowers or something fun like that. So yeah, and I'll also include at the end here an example of how I use these tools for one of my art projects. A big shout out and thank you to Adam Fanari who um, taught me uh, everything I kind of know about scriptable tools and really helped jumpstart me on this project um, when he was a guest lecturer at the animation workshop. I'll go ahead and link his uh, link in below, but yeah, I just learned so much so quickly and I just wanted to share, um, you know, some of my findings and my process online just to document everything in case it might be helpful. But yes, thanks for watching and goodbye.